Ahoy! The devs made some cool announcements for upcoming changes as well as some things that were changed between the PTR and the current patch, so let's talk about it. The first thing they mentioned in the context of things that they changed based on PTR feedback before Season 1 went live was the passive progression for the Season Pass. So the active progression is when you do the cards, you do the journey, you do all the tasks that directly give you points, whereas passive progression are things like trials, invasions, and really other activities that you do in New World all the time that aren't necessarily tied to you grinding the Season Pass itself. And for those, they significantly increased the XP they passively give. Now unfortunately when they say significantly, I couldn't find any list of the values. I found an older list from the PTR, but since then the values must have been changed again between PTR and life, because for example, boss kills in expeditions now give 15 season XP. Still, relatively speaking, the passive season XP seems to be much much lower than actively farming just some easy activity cards. They also implemented rewarding you for getting XP in general, for example from quests. Whenever you reach 10,000 XP, you also get a batch of Season XP. They suggest that you can either play normally and get passive XP, or if you don't know what to do, you can look at the activity cards and choose something to actively earn XP. I think that if you're purely passively farming Season XP, you probably won't be able to finish the Season Pass in time, to be honest, unless you're grinding the game 24-7. There are most certainly more effective methods to farm Season XP, and that's something I can talk about in the next days. They also made some other adjustments to the activities on the activity card itself, though I think there will be more adjustments to that in the future based on how I'm feeling about some of those cards compared to others. Some are just extremely easy while others take half an hour to complete. Feedback they received for the Empyrean Forge was that people didn't like having to swap gear sets for bosses again. Therefore they changed Ifrit to be human instead of Angry Earth to prevent the whole thing of having a mixed ward for bosses in expeditions. They said that people are usually fine with some mobs having other mob types, so the lost ghost stayed lost. They also said that not only they will be taking this into consideration for expeditions moving forward, but also backwards. So we might see some changes to some of the existing bosses, like for example the bosses in Barnacles and Black Powder, which are currently Angry Earth and Beast, so it would be very cool to see a bit of an overhaul there. They did however say that there are no promises on when this will happen. The Crassus world event on the live servers was happening at the same time as they were working on the Fury of the Spriggan event, so the feedback from the Crassus event directly affects what they did for the Spriggan event. So a lot of people that played the Crassus event felt like the first time daily reward was worth it, but then the secondary rewards after running it more than once did not feel good at all. And even after they improved the rewards a little bit, they still felt bad. So most people basically played the event once per day and then were kind of bummed because that was it. This time instead they said the second rewards are going to be good and it's going to be rewarding to continue farming. We've seen some of these secondary rewards, I made a video talking about this which I'll link here if you're interested in the details of the event. But I think this may not be all because a lot of the rewards they were talking about there were also the rewards that I think they were kind of talking about what people didn't want with Crassus like all the named world drops that are just random BOEs and stuff. So I would imagine there might be something coming that we haven't seen still, especially because there was, for example, that housing item, that Spriggan Flame Brazier, that you can't actually get in any way on PTR. So maybe that is something that will be linked to the secondary caches. We will find out, but yeah, I will of course inform you once we know more. One of the things they introduced on in the PTR were the Flame Cores. These are used to roll random human ward and bane gear at the new forge. They are also used to craft the new human bane trophies and they are used for the new heart rune from the expedition. Based on the feedback from PTR, they lowered the amounts required to craft these things. But then again, even though they did that, the requirements are still quite high for some of them. One of the season quests is using the flame core forge 10 times, which by itself already requires 100 flame cores. By the way, if you're doing that, only do one craft at a time and exit the forge and enter it again, otherwise it may not count as a separate craft. Just a little FYI there. Also, to get three major trophies, you would still need 165 flame cores, and then you still need an additional bunch for the heart runes. So there are a lot of flame cores required and originally on the PTR these were bound to the character, meaning you couldn't trade them, which was especially annoying for crafting trophies. Thanks to the feedback they changed that and made them tradable, so you can put flame cores on the trading post or you can buy them there if you want to craft your trophies or your other things. Since you still need a lot of flame cores, you may be struggling a little bit to get enough of them. 
If that is a problem for you, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell because tomorrow I will be talking about exactly that. I will compare all the methods to farm flame cores and tell you how well they work, what the best ways are and how many flame cores you can get out of them. But the devs also talked about some longer term plans. The Silver Crawl storyline is what was added with Season 1 and generally, honestly, I think it was a pretty cool one. But one major part of the feedback they received was that the faceless boss fight at the end was not up to the standards of what the other quest lines these days offer. We basically have this small solo instance at the end of Brimstone Sands, which is Apophis, and apparently the new Brightwood storyline actually has a quest boss like that as well. So the team said that going forward from season 2 and for all future seasons, the boss fights at the end will be more epic. They couldn't change it for Faceless after the PTR because it was just too deep into the development cycle already and they would have had to change too many mechanics, it's not an easy thing for them to do. So that's what we're getting in the future with the next seasons. Feedback that they've received multiple times is that it is hard to test things on PTR because various things are missing there, PTR being the public test realm. In future PTR tests there will be a simplified loadout. This means you don't have to open a bunch of boxes in order to get started. You just have a few boxes at best and that will give you exactly the gear set that you're looking for and you can just jump right in if you want to test some new mechanics or something. You can still get the customizable character option as well with all the more detailed chest choices and everything that you can do if you want that, but there is both now, which I think is very good. Also another complaint was that the number of craft mods was too low, especially for things like Iron Guardsman Insignia. There were like 250 in the chest and that's just 10 rolls, so not very much. And the number of craft mods in future patches will be increased significantly if you go on the PTR. Now, sorry for being absent for a couple of days, I was busy. And by busy I mean this, and if you know what this is then you know what I've been busy doing. I've been busy grinding the forge because I really wanted to see what it is like at max expedition level and it's it's so much fun, I absolutely love it. It's definitely challenging, I think it's one of the more challenging expeditions out there, but it's also so rewarding once you really learn the mechanics because you can get it done so much easier, it becomes so much more fluid and yeah, I'm just super happy that I got where I wanted to get in this week. And now I think... It's very, very unfortunate that the team decided to change mutations to other expeditions. I believe that the Empyrean Forge itself is a very important feature of this patch. It's one of the major pieces of content. And for players that come back now and that maybe hear about it and hear about how cool it is, they only have access to the base version. Now, I'm sure if you play the Forge for the first time, the base version is already pretty cool and already challenging enough before you have ward gear and everything going. But what I noticed a lot this week is that we had to leave some people at some point, like maybe M7, M8, M9, because they couldn't quite make it in terms of playing as much in this one week. And many others didn't even have time to get anywhere close to that. Because, well, they were doing other activities in the game or they were just busy this week. And all of them basically didn't have the chance to experience the high-level mutations of the Forge yet. And I think that is super, super unfortunate because I think it's a really, really fun experience that everyone deserves to experience in the season. And also there are actually quests tied to the M10 Forge. One of the quests is just to complete an M10 Forge. Another one is to complete an M10 Forge with a very high score. And I think AGS should give us more opportunity to do that and maybe make the Forge a semi-permanent or permanent mutation for the duration of the season. So that maybe it goes along with two other mutations or maybe it's just one locked mutation and then you have a secondary mutation every week along with the Forge. There are many options to do this but I think the Forge should just be available for people that especially come back but also that want to grind further into the Forge because it's a completely new war type as well. This would obviously also be fun for the hardcore speedrunners that I'm sure haven't discovered all of the skips that are possible yet. I posted a forum thread where I outlined those points and a few more that I will link below if you want to comment on that or like that, give it some attention, so that maybe the devs will treat that feedback the same they treated the feedback from PTR, then feel free to do so. Tomorrow we'll be talking about flame core farm methods and then the next days we'll also be talking about some DPS testing, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you'd like to support me further, you can do so on Patreon, like these lovely folks already do, where you always get exclusive trading tips first, and also you can chat with us in the Patreon Discord. Thanks to my patrons and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.